Hello, everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is going to be probably another short and sweet episode because I have been working on large scale projects, so there's not a lot to show you, but I will show you something, and he's in the picture right here. That is done. He looks funny, though. Um, today, I am drinking Tetley Earl Grey tea in my fancy new mug that I got from Winners. I think I've showed this to you before, but I still really like it. So, mm. okay, let's get at it. I also will not be able to do a lot of editing today, so you're gonna get this raw right from the camera. Alrighty, this is my finished object, the flat unicorn baby. The only thing that I had left to do was his arms, so I finished them and then I sewed his head on. His head's a little bit floppy, but that's okay. I think he'll be, he's good to like hang around the neck and run around with, which is what we want for little guys. He is, oh yeah, he's always, he's covered in hair. The dogs have gotten at him, but I think he's cute. Um, his head, in my opinion, is a little bit long for his body, but he is the prototype for me. So I know for the next pony what I'm going to do instead. So he's very, very cute. Oh, his tail is still braided. My daughter's been playing with him. She wants one herself, but I'm going to get some different yarn for her. So she has a sweet, cute little guy. So there, there's his tail, his hair. It's for my nephew for Christmas. Um, so when I filled up his arms, I didn't have any more fiber fill and I have this yarn that I really don't like at all. Like I don't like the color. I don't like how it feels. It's really crusty. It's acrylic yarn. So I just filled his arms with that. And I actually like the way that his body feels better with the yarn fill than with the fiber fill. Like my daughter did a good job. It's not that she did a bad job or anything, but I just like the weight of how he feels better with the yarn inside of him than the other. So I don't know. I don't know if that's something that's usual to amigurumi that people prefer different kinds of stuffings, but that is, uh, that is what I have to say about this. And he's not a pattern. I just made him based off of a picture that I saw that I liked and I was like, Oh, I could probably do that. And I did. So he's, he's ready to go for Christmas after I lint roll him. I might put, I don't know. I might spray a little bit of essential oil scent on him or something just so he makes sure that he smells really nice. So there he is. That is my only finished thing. And I, but I'm finally done him, which is great. I haven't had a finished object for quite a while. So that's that. Um, and what I am working on, I'll start with the old working ons from last week. Uh, last time I showed you this sweater, this is my a little shifty. I looked it up to see what it was called sweater. The last time that you guys saw it, it was right before I joined um, under the arm. So I have done that and I've done part of the trunk and I have been trying it on and it, so, okay. So it's a little bulgy at the, this is the back here. So there's like a, a poof out there. So I was like, okay, if I really slowly decrease, you won't really notice that. And then it won't have like that big gap in the back, but I don't know if I reduce the number of stitches too quickly, even still, um, but it's not fitting quite right. So I am very worried that I'm going to have to frog all of this and try it again. That's the thing when you don't have a pattern is that you kind of have, like, it's, it's really, really touch and go, which I don't have a pattern for this. I just like the sweater. Um, yeah, so it's touch and go and things can go kind of sideways and it looks kind of weird. This, it doesn't look weird, but when I try it on, like, it's just, it's a little bit this sounds weird. I usually wear a lot of form-fitted clothing, but I wanted this one to be not baggy, but a little bit more loose and it's just not ending up that way. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to frog. And the reason that I'm just like, oh, about that is because the yarn that I'm using, this is called roving yarn and you can see it has, it's nice and fluffy, but it has, it's a single strand that's very lightly twisted. And it, I mean, it's easy. Like if I want to, I can just pull it like this and it'll rip apart, even though it is still acrylic yarn. Um, but because of that, like I explained last time, when the hairs get together, even in artificial fibers, they still really like to be with each other. So it takes a really long time to frog stuff because it gets really, really stuck together and it can be, it ends up very naughty in cases as well. And with the two balls going back and forth, I end up getting the, the strands tangled with each other. So that's always an adventure. But I mean, if I have to do that to make it exactly what I want, I have, will spend the time and do that. Like, absolutely. I've done that in many other cases. It's just, I don't want it to look really, really frayed by the time I put it on. Cause I feel like it already looks like it's loved up. Like, do you see that? My camera's a bit dirty today, I think, but. 
So yeah, it like it's coming along, but I'm gonna have to go back. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna I'm gonna try it on again. I think I'm I might put the balls in a bag and then just kind of wear it around the house a little bit and see how that feels and if it still is like uh because sometimes I have to do like a more proper wear test to figure it out because even if I'm just like trying it on I'm like okay fits 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 and then I get like going and I'm like oh actually like this is tight across the back or whatever so yes I have made good progress but as we know I am the queen of frogging so it's entirely possible that a bunch of this will be frogged and I will be probably in the same place again next time when I show you what we're working on and oh the blanket yes so I'm still working on the big waffle blanket this one I remember I put the stitch marker in so I know exactly where we were but it's on this side oh no did I lose it oh no did it come out oh there it is I don't know which side I put it on so last time I chatted with you I was right here so I've made this much progress and I just started a new color last night it's sort of like a minty it's like a color of mouthwash in my opinion so we're starting on a new color my kids are like there's so much green but i mean if you see the size of the blanket like there's not really that much there's going to be a lot of blue and i have a lot a lot a lot of blue yarn to put in here um and what i am doing is so this this is the waffle stitch which is a series of it's a two row repeat so it is double crochet double crochet front post double crochet double crochet so you make a crochet in every single stitch from the previous row then on the next row, when you flip it over, so this is not the same on the front as it is the back. So when you go across this way, it's back post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, double crochet, back post, back post. And then you can see like it is still a series. So you all any any row that you put or any stitch that you put a regular double crochet in when you're going this way. And then when you start this side, that's where you put your back post double crochet and then you do a regular double crochet in the previous rows, front post double crochet. Did I say back post? I think I messed that up. I'm totally sorry. It's, you don't even have to know how to do a back post double crochet. It's all regular double crochet and front post double crochet, regardless of the side that you're on. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure that I said back post and that's not true. It's, it's front post because that's how you get it to look like this. So it's lovely and waffly and it's already, it's really, really warm and it's already becoming a bit cumbersome to have on my lap. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna put this places. And this has also now no longer been able to be called the car project because when it, when a blanket is small, it, when it's up to about, oh, about there, I would say about that big, you can roll it up and put it into a project bag very easily and you know it's it's good to go but now yeah it's it's unwieldy so this is a work at home project only all right i'm going to move my stitch marker that we were just looking at and i'm going to put it in this row so that i can keep track of how much i make until we chat again so there is that so those are the two things that i am working on that i have been working on and i'm still working on and i'm just looking around sorry um i feel like i had one other thing i lost it already that didn't take oh here it is oh my gosh story of my life I've been like crazy busy at work for the past few days and it's like it's okay but it like it totally frazzled my mind and I've talked about this on here before is that like when I get in a project I have this like middle part of my brain that works and then like the outer sides it's just like this is like I get like deep into my brain I guess like this is the analogy I'm trying to say I get deep into like where I have to focus in a very specific way and access very specific parts of my brain that typically don't get accessed in everyday things. So I feel like a lot of the blood flow goes to that section to help work it and help keep everything going and all of that, which means like the normal everyday things like word recollection, like they kind of go out the window. Anyways, sorry, my bad. I got off topic there. Um, oh yes, I'm, so my husband asked me to make him a toque because he actually has a lot of toques um, and I've made him one that he's kept and it's the very first toque that I made and he likes it even though I look at it and I'm like, ew, because I would just like put extra stitches wherever I felt like there's nothing uniform about it. The yarn is not that nice and you know, it just, it is what it is. So I feel like I am so much better equipped to do a better job for him that I'm going to. So he's asked for a toque and I just got this started the other day, yesterday, day before, something like that. And it is a linen stitch, which you can totally do linen stitch. And this yarn, let's see, can you see? You can kind of see the V. So all of the V's will be pointing up because it's top down. I almost exclusively do my toques top down 
I think very rarely do I do them bottom up unless the stitch lends itself to that better than top down. Anyway, top down. Um, and I didn't do magic circle, but I just, you just pull it tight at the end and it's all good. Oh, sorry. This is, this is super hairy yarn. Oh, my apologies. It's not actually the dog's fault this time. It's the yarn's fault. Um, it's very, very filthy and sweet. Anyway, so double crochet. Yes, you can do increases in, oh my gosh, double crochet. Linen stitch. I just have, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like I know when I look at it, I know exactly what's going on. It's just like retrieving the information to tell you is what's not going great. My apologies, linen stitch. You can do linen stitch in the round. Sometimes it looks a little bit funny, but as long as you don't do your increases in the same spot, you'll be totally fine. Anywho, that's that. Making his toque, it is just started. We're not very many rows in. The yarn that I'm using is the leftovers from the Perfect Crochet t-shirt that I used. So I had a little bit of a skein left over and then another full one. I highly doubt it's going to take this and this whole thing. So I'll probably just have a little bit of this left, which I don't know what I'm going to do with, but it's really pretty. Um, and oh, I do have the tag left still. So just as a refresher, because it was a while ago that we talked about the Perfect t-shirt and showed you all of the details, but this is the... This is the, the label, so it's Highland, it's DK size, which I think is a two? No, I'd say it's a three, it's a three. Um, and it's 60% super fine alpaca and 40% muesling free wool. It is hand dry, don't put in the dryer, which obviously. And again, like with the halo on it and everything, um, it the, the stitches like to stay together. It can be fairly easily frogged because I did have to frog part of the shirt and it does come out. But as long as you go slowly, it'll be okay. You can't just rip like that. Otherwise they, those friends of fibers really like to hang on to each other and they will not let go at all. Okay. What else? Oh, I will talk about, since this is not very long, some plans that I have coming up for yarn that I want to make. Oh, sorry. To go back to this, I am using the Susan Bates 3.75 hook just to get a nice not see-through fabric with this. And this is the stitch actually that my husband picked because I, for toques actually, I really like to do front post double crochet to make it look kind of ribbed. He doesn't like that. So it made me kind of sad, but I mean, it's hat, his hat. And he saw one that I made for my daughter and he's like, make it like that. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I can totally do that. Totally do that. Anyway, upcoming plans. You guys will probably remember this skein. It has been several things since I brought it home. And it is again, so uh, back the last time that I talked about and had something partially made with this was when I had leg warmers. So this is a worsted weight yarn. This is a three, uh, a size three. And I was making leg warmers, which they were going along so nice. They look so beautiful. And then I put them on and my, it is so thick. I cannot, like, I cannot get over how thick this worked up. So it was way, way too much. Like it was at the point that it was uncomfortably thick. Like think like two pairs of jeans thick. That's what it felt like. So I frogged it and put it back in here, but I have a shirt that is open weave, kind of like a, I don't know. It's like, a, I would I would call it an over shirt, but that's not what the term is called. Like you wear a tank top or a cap sleeve t-shirt in like a plain color, and then you put this open weave shirt on top. So that is my plans for this. I absolutely have enough for that. I know I checked the pattern, checked the gauge, everything like that. So we'll be good with this. So instead of this being leg warmers, I am going to use some of this really fun sock yarn that I have. And I have a lot. So this, this is supposed to have enough yarn to make, I think it ends up being like two and a half pairs of socks which is five socks. Um, so this should be plenty for what I want to use it for because what, one of the cakes that uses one, like, or it's like for the one, the one sock goes to the height that I want. So yeah, so this will be coming up. This is a lovely, fun, super stripey yarn. Um, it is, I'd say a two, it's a sock, it's a sock yarn, which I think is two. I feel like sometimes DK and worsted and all that, like they get into this weird place where they can all kind of be the same. So yeah, that is the plans of that. This is not going to be happening for a while. I would really like to power through the waffle blanket as much as I can because I went through and I cleaned up a bunch of the yarn that I have upstairs and downstairs because my house is full of yarn, of course. And I was able to find a bunch of things and put some 
yarn away and put some into this blanket project, which is going to take care of most of what I have of acrylic right now. Something that I have frogged and it is appropriately green. So the dress that we were talking about, I, I frogged it. I cannot find the color anywhere. So I have four cakes and a little bit of this, which I'm not sure what I'm going to make with it. I, it's enough to make a little, a little something, just not what I was making with it, but that's okay. I can go to my yarn store and I will be able to find something that will probably work better than this. Cause this was ever so slightly too thick. It was totally wearable and totally doable. But I think in the long run, if I can find something, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, something that is even if it's an acrylic wool or an acrylic alpaca or something blend like that, um, it would probably work better because it will still have that warmth factor, but it, the yarn itself doesn't have to be as heavy to deal with it. So that's that. Yeah, I don't know. I like this color though. I might, I don't want to put it in the blanket because I would have to rip so many rows out to put it where I feel it would fit. And I don't want to do that because, well, that sounds like that would not be a good time. It's taken a lot of time to get there. So that's, that is that. That is what I am working on. That's what I would like to work on. So I'm trying to plan a few weeks in advance for myself just to get some of the stuff done and not just to be chronically frogging things because that's not beneficial to anybody. Okay, is there anything else to report? It's miserable cold, or it was miserable cold here anyway, and ugh, like it was minus 24, minus 32 with the wind chill at some point. So I constantly question myself, why do I actively work or live here when it's like that? Um, I've lived here my whole life though. So I, I don't know why I get so upset. I do it to myself. So that's been great. Um, and then it's supposed to be warmed up a little bit today, but I don't know if it's, it's supposed to get to be like one above. I'm not sure if it's going to, if it's going to make it, but it'll be, uh, it'll be a sloppy wet day out otherwise. And yeah, we're just right now, it's just the final like leg to get things done at work to, you know, get ready for the holiday season, get a bunch of stuff wrapped up before the new year and things like that. Um, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't really have a lot to report in terms of like life this week, other than I was just super busy. And I mean, it's good because I like to, I like my job. I like working. Even if times I get very frustrated, I do overall enjoy the job as a whole. I enjoy some of the finer things. I enjoy the people that I work with, all of that fun stuff. So that like, that's important to me. Um, but yeah, it's like, my work is very feast or famine. Like there's periods of time where it's like crazy. And then other times where it's like, I have to do like those like make work things like cleaning up certain, certain items in database files and things like that. So that, uh, it's a little bit of that feast time right now. So I got a, a lot of stuff on the go that has to get done, but I mean, it will all get done, right? Like to everything there is a season, it'll be done soon. And, oh, I didn't tell you guys. So I started making a, I was just looking around trying to remember if anything. So this is not crochet or anything, but it's like, I love experiments and stuff like that. So I've been making a sourdough starter. So it is currently living on top of my fridge right now. We're on day six. Yeah, something like that, day six. And I think it's working because it's not moldy and it smells, it's the things that I were reading saying that if it has a very slight vinegar odor, that's probably what you're going for. So it smells a tiny bit like vinegar. So that's good. Um, I, the reason I wanted to do this was, a, I don't know, that was like a big thing at the beginning of the pandemic was everybody wanted to make bread and there was like no flour to be found anywhere. And I was, you know, I like making bread and I like baking and things like that. So I've started trying to do that again. I'm not a great baker. I don't bake like sweet things all that often. Like I do cookies and I make these cakes that are really ugly, but my kids love them. Um, but typically I don't make a lot of sweets because they don't turn out that well. I prefer, like, I prefer salty and savory things to eat anyway. So that's just what I am lent to. Um, so yeah, and I, I used to, I used to make bread all the time when the kids were little, all the time. I had this great no need recipe that I found. Um, gosh, I'll, if I can find the link of it, I'll put it in the description box below so you guys can test it out. Cause yeah, it was like pretty much no fail. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to get back into doing that. So I decided, I was like, oh, well, like, why not? Like I've made my own kombucha. I have my own SCOBY. I know how to make SCOBYs. This can't be that much different. And it turns out that it's a little bit less particular than a SCOBY. So a SCOBY is the thing that you can make, um, kombucha with. And then there's also a vinegar SCOBY. That's a little bit different. You make them differently. I haven't 
tried my hand at that yet, but I have done sourdough, which is air yeast, and then the scoby, which is bacteria and yeast in the little like cake thingy. It's kind of gross looking, but it's a very neat process. Um, so yeah, so I have that and I'm going to be doing some baking of hopefully bread and buns. And then I found these orange cinnamon rolls that use the sourdough. So I'm really, really excited to try that because if that goes well, I would also put cranberry in there because I love orange and cranberry together. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I've got a tickle or something here. Mm. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm catching something. I usually get sick at Christmas time anyway. All right, that's all I can discuss with you guys today. So thank you so much for joining me. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of the next time that I update. <coughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're all so special to me and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you that joined me on my channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.